Good morning, and welcome to our first full day in Fez. So today we are starting with a walking tour at 10 o'clock, but first we get to go upstairs to um, the rooftop terrace for breakfast, which is really kindly provided by our Riyadh. So let's get going. <laughs> Unfortunately, we kind of had to rush through breakfast, mm -hmm. but it was absolutely so high. But yeah, the breakfast was absolutely so good. amazing, and it's a shame that we couldn't sit there and enjoy it, but we have to get to our tour. The area was initially settled upon by the Berber people, but it wasn't actually founded as a city until the year 809 AD by King Idris II. We also learned that Riyadh means garden and we saw a stunning Riyadh on our tour. And so if there aren't like plants and like water and stuff inside, then it's actually not a Riyadh, it's called a Dar. And our tour guide was like, oh, you should get your money back. <laughs> so actually where we're staying is a Dar. And what we learned is that the families in the summer sleep on the lower level where it's cooler. And then in the winter time, they close all those doors and move up to a higher level and they sleep there and live there during the cooler months of the year. city of many gates. However, not many of them remain because the French took them down when they colonized this city. Such as the significance of Fez having previously been the capital and having maintained a lot of its older structures that the UNESCO really wanted to keep it as a world heritage site. Unfortunately, due to the building materials, some of the buildings have actually just started to fall down. That's why UNESCO took it in the 80s so that they could actually begin some reparations. There's some modern brick that you'll see which UNESCO used to actually restore the buildings but everything else in the waiting list is all held up by wooden scaffolding. For anything that's fallen down that's now just become part of the square because they didn't want to use any pneumatic equipment in case other buildings would also collapse. <music> sections. It's divided by a river and on one side it accommodated the Spanish refugees and on the other side it was the Tunisian refugees. The Medina itself has different sections to it so you'll find certain sections selling like copper exclusively or you have a carpet section. You have a section with jewelry and shoes and clothes um, and then there are parts of it where you find it all mixed together but generally different areas sell various types of goods. We also got to go to the Shawara Tanneries, which is one of the main places that Fess is known for. Uh, it's one of the oldest still working tanneries in the whole of Africa, I believe. Um, and so we got a, a full tour, including being able to see it, see all the processes that went into place in order to uh, turn all of the hides into leather. We also got to um, see exactly what goes into some of the dyes and stuff that they use. Um, so things like saffron for the yellow, which makes it more expensive, indigo for the blue, um, and so on and so forth. So that was really cool. One of 
the other very ornate and cool buildings we got to see was the Madrasa al atalim The idea behind this is that it's a religious school, particularly aimed at people between 15 and 18, to learn more about theological subjects and philosophical subjects. And the idea behind that was so that those that went to that school would then be prepared to then go to the university. University, which we were really lucky to get a look inside. One cool thing we actually discovered when we were being shown the university is that because the classrooms were very basic, all that there really was for the lecturer to provide the information to their students was a chair. And so the greatest scholars of the Arab world would be invited to sit in that chair. So there became a reputation, if you are a great thinker, a great scholar within the world, then had you sat in that chair. And that is what people believe to be the origin of chairman, chairwoman, chairperson. So that was pretty cool. I think these particular dates are from Morocco. I think these ones are from Algeria. This is pistachio nougat. And then these are the pastries um, that got recommended to us last night for dessert we to try the horn. Yeah, the horn gazelle. Not 100% sure on the name. Exactly, no, but it had like honey and sesame and a little almond in there and it's delicious. And what was the other one we tried? Sabakia? Yeah, Shabakia. Shabakia. So that one is basically, it kind of looks like a gyoza, but instead of like a meat filling, it actually has like kind of a almond paste, like marmite. So we're looking forward to trying these. So we've just tried one of the ones that we think were from Algeria. Um, really nice, quite sweet, and really soft, kind of melts in your mouth. So now we're going to go from that, going to try one of these ones that are Moroccan. They are absolutely huge, but I'm very intrigued. Mm. We were told by the seller that this, these were better quality, and he's about right. Honestly, this is these are probably the best ones I've ever had. So we've got also some pistachio nougat, um, which I picked out because I pretty much love all of these pistachio flavors. We actually got a little sample from the seller, which was that peanut one, and it was in. Um, so very intrigued by this one, so I'm just going to have a quick chat. Mm. Oh wow. It's 
like it's hard to bite into, but then as soon as it like hits your mouth, it just melts. And it's basically like a sweeter version, like if you've ever had pistachio ice cream, it's like a sweeter version of that. We've just done a little taste test of these other little ones. Um, this one, kind of like an amaretti, but it's quite neutral. This um, is similar to like the horn shaped pastry, um, but more pastry and less almonds. This one was our favorite by far. Um, peanut flavor, absolutely incredible. And then this one, probably our second favorite. Um, very subtle, subtle almonds in there, but just great. So, yeah, good selection all around. Just so you guys know, it cost 20 dirhams to enter each address that we've been into today. So, super cheap and totally worth it. So we've come to Madrasa Buhinania, which is very similar to the other Madrasa that we um, went to as part of our tour. Um, this one seems to be a lot larger. The um, school rooms and the prayer rooms are much bigger. Um, but another thing also is that it seems to have its own tower, which also has a um, well, the remains of what used to be a running water clock, uh, which was one of the main features of here. dinner in a different part of town that's a little less touristy. I got something that is traditionally Moroccan. It's pastilla with vegetables in it and it got chicken tagine tonight. We just want to go over what happened at dinner. I was trying to kind of go for somewhere a little bit more off the beaten path. A little um, more local. Exactly. Um, so I was looking through TripAdvisor came across this place. It looked good, the menu looked great, and so we thought, oh fantastic, let's go for it. We just wanted a little bit more adventure. Exactly. So after sort of navigating through the streets, which unfortunately Google Maps didn't quite have everything absolutely accurate, so we maybe got lost a couple of times. But Nick did an amazing job of navigating us, and it, that part worked out fine. Thankfully, yes. When we got there, the place was well, certainly the little pin ended with us basically being like right slap bang in the middle of a roundabout. We kind of ended up settling for the nearest restaurant and they kind of saw us coming. The price of the food ended up basically being double what we paid last night for quality that we thought was less. Despite having a really good day, the evening was a bit of a downer. So just a little bit miffed. And really. we don't want to come off complaining. We've both been fortunate to do a decent amount of traveling. Yeah. The architecture we're seeing, the history we're learning about, mm. the culture yeah. we're being immersed in. It's actually like something really special because it's so different than anything I've ever experienced before. But I'm also having a hard time reconciling with the fact that I feel like I don't know who to trust here. Maybe that's something that like we've just been warned about, that if someone offers to help you with directions, then they want money. Maybe that's actually not the case, and that's a preconceived notion. I just have this feeling of being a little taken advantage of. Yeah, basically, it kind of just feels like it's one set of rules when it comes to locals, and then it's a completely different set of rules when they see tourists, which isn't the best feeling um so i'm not really sure what to make of it but in comparison to the rest of the trip so far really it's only been sort of five ten percent that's kind of been pulling it down but it is enough to leave a bit of a sour taste in the mouth i've never had this feeling before when i travel ever mm -hmm. we're gonna make the best of it because at the end of the day we realize how lucky we are to be here exactly it is privilege to be traveling not taking anything away from the fact that we realize the privileged position that we are in to even be here in the first place i think we're more just sharing this information so for other people they don't feel um as ambushed or like see this as unexpected at least just so you know what you're prepared for with all that said we're gonna sign off for the night got a big tour ahead of us tomorrow so in the meantime take care and keep smiling 